Hello everyone. I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the U.S. and I'm here to bring you a live paper crafting class. I'm very excited as always because I just love teaching the art of paper crafting and excuse me hang on I'm having a drippy nose lately <laughs> and I'm going to be sharing with you um, a couple things in this card. I've got a really neat background idea for it but I've also got um, this beautiful bundle. It's a stamp set, die, and embossing folder bundle. It's called a hybrid bundle because of the way the embossing folder and the dies work together. Plus, it's just perfect for this time of year when we're thinking spring. Um, although those of you in the southern hemisphere, <laughs> you're um you're yeah, what are you in? You're in summer going into fall soon. So, but still, it's summer there. So we've got some citrus fruit to share with you today. It's a beautiful stamp set called Sweet Citrus. That's the name of the whole bundle, in fact. Let's give a big welcome to Lisa Marshall and to Trisha Josephs. They are my moderators. We have uh, Trisha Josephs on YouTube, and we have Lisa Marshall on Facebook. They're there to answer your questions during the live. So if you're watching while the live is going on, again, this is 11 a.m. Central Time. I forgot to tell you, it's 11 a.m. Central Time on March 29th, 2023. So if you're watching during that hour, then you're commenting while we're live. And if you're watching afterwards, you can comment afterwards. If you're commenting up to a week afterwards, you're gonna get entered into a prize drawing, as well as the people who are commenting live on YouTube, you get entered into a prize drawing while we're live. So yay, we'll do that at the end. But it's good to see where you're from. It's wonderful to hear how long you've been crafting. It's wonderful to hear how long you've been watching me on my lives. If you're new, um, a big welcome to you. Thank you for tuning in. There, hopefully, no more than an hour. I try to get them to 40 minutes every every time, but it's it doesn't ever happen. Um, but I'll try to uh, talk fast today because we've got wonderful news coming up in the demonstrator world. If you are a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, raise your hand. Um, we have some really exciting stuff happening today on, again, March 29th, 2023. We're transitioning into a new catalog in a little over a month. And so the demonstrators get to see it today. We get the digital version um, shared with us in a, in a couple hours. And then, um, I don't know exactly how many hours, but uh, two to three hours. I can't remember from where we're at right now. But also before that, there's a big reveal about uh, a color refresh or color revamp or whatever Stampin' Up! is going to call it this time. Every five years they've been doing this. And so we're going to have a whole kind of uh, change and altering of our color families. And we'll get to see um, some colors maybe come back. Well, we know that there, there are two coming back, Pretty Peacock and Lost Lagoon. Um, and then we also are going to hear about the new in colors. So it's a big, big day. We're so excited. Next week, I'll be able to pre-order some of this stuff. So you can bet your bottom dollar that I'll be doing a live on a color comparison very, very soon for all of you. Um, if you've seen those before, you know that it's it's a fun way to, to just kind of see the colors compared to previous or current colors. So yeah, we're gonna introduce new colors next week sometime. <laughs> Hand waving, I love it, thanks Kay. <laughs> um, so yeah, chat, uh, let me hear about your life. I wanna hear what's going on with you. Um, if you need prayers, comment because I love to be a prayer warrior for people. So let me know um, what's going on in your world. If you have great news to share, share that too. We love to hear from everybody. So that's the fun of lives. Okay, we're going to go ahead and um, start. So what do I need to share before we start? The screen. Let's go ahead and pull that up and then you'll be able, oops, wrong thing. Pull that out of the way, Rachel. You'll be able to see um, a PDF. Actually, this is um, this is a. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta work my head before I talk. Um, this is a PDF that you'll be able to download from my website. In the YouTube description of the live currently, there is a link to my website which will go live. The link will go live at 12:15, so a little over an hour. You'll be able to access this PDF. So don't worry about taking a screenshot of it. But this here has images of the card that I'm going to create for you. Um, even a little uh, image down there in the corner with the pattern. 
It's got the supplies listed and they are clickable, most of them. And then we've also got measurements on there. The date and the title is at the top so that if you are collecting these, you can reference them. I share one pretty much every Wednesday. So if you want to go back into my blog at, I haven't even pulled that up yet, stampyourartout.com. If you want to go back in there, you can search for past PDFs that way by just going to every Wednesday um, posting. So yeah. Um, all right, so there's the pretty card. You can see it. I'm gonna go ahead and bring us now to the desktop. And I'll pull this out of the way here. We can see that we've got this little pattern sheet here. And what this is, is a faux quilt type pattern, um, especially if you're gonna share it in the way that V Tran, who is a demonstrator in my group, uh, a good friend of mine, I'm gonna show you quickly what she did um, with one of her cards. It's really fun so let's go over there first so she did this fun pattern which de definitely looks like a quilt doesn't it um, using this pattern and so she used different patterns of designer paper and pieced them together like this i'm going to be teaching you the cuts of that pattern and i've got a link to her blog post where she shared this card um, actually a link to this card and then this card is the one that is linked in my video description those of you on, watching on Facebook, by the way, you will get um, all of the description that's in the YouTube right now. It, I'll transfer it over after the live. I just can't do two things at once. So you'll get all that information after the live is done, and then you'll be able to access all of those links that I'm telling the YouTubers that they have. But isn't that cool? So she did the same pattern, but she did it with like a scenery type of designer paper. Um, so this is... Um, you know, just a couple different ways that you can do it. So we're going to do it a third way today. And I'm going to bring myself back in here. We're going to do it a third way today. And we're going to do it with just blank cardstock that is not stamped. But if you look closely, it is embossed with a pattern. So we have this beautiful citrus pattern that we are going to be embossing first. And then I'm going to show you how to cut it. So let's kind of just take this out of the way. We're going to be making another one anyways, so we'll just get rid of that. I'm also going to share with you today some awesome products that are purchasable through the Country Hive. This is my dauber holder, which I love, 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 love. And I, I just, I think you should all have it. Um, but they're introducing a new product today. So this is one of the products that I love. It holds my daubers and we're going to be using daubers today. This is another one that is totally my go-to type of um, holder as well. So this one holds adhesives. It's the adhesive caddy. So these are the organizer kind of holders for some of my craft items. They've got all kinds of things there, but they're introducing to us today these guys. And they are little hex trays. So they're six-sided hexagon shaped trays. And a bonus for them is not only, I mean, it's nice to be able to take your goodies and throw them in there so that they're easy to sort through, you know, and you're not putting them on your desk. Now you can just take and grab the ones you want, right? But a bonus to them is that they are magnetic. Um, they've got a little bit of a magnet pull in them. So when you're working with smaller dies, like, oops, like these flowers, Oops, let's throw that in there again. See, now it's it's stuck in the tray. So those smaller dies that you worry about getting lost on your table, which you know I've done that before, you guys. <laughs> I have done that before. So when that happens, um, you know, you're, you're always wishing that you had a tray that those things kind of stuck to. So there you go. So we've got new trays from the Country Hive that you'll just want to get your hands on. I'm going to pour these back in because I don't want to tip that over before we're going to use it today oh and they come in different colors yay green green okay so let's start let's grab our trimmer and we're going to cut our cardstock in half we're going to go which direction are we going oh we're going this this way this time okay so we're going to cut our eight and a half by eleven cardstock in half in this direction at five, I'm sorry, four and a quarter inches. So you can see I brought it to the four and a quarter inch mark. I'm gonna use my dark blade to slice. I've got two card bases if I want. And then 
we're going to go ahead and go to this direction and score. And I'm seeing lots of people talking about sending prayers to people. So this is the way to do it, right? I mean, I invited you to do it, right? <laughs> so share what's going on so we can all be prayer wor warriors for you, right? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and score now. I'm using my light blade and we're going to score. And now we've got our card base folded in half. This card base fits into our medium size envelopes, which we have in vanilla, white, and clear. Clear is kind of fun. So if you are, you know, curious what you would send them in, there you go. Uh, I'm going to set that out of the way for now. Grab our bone folder and just give this a nice crease so it lies flatter. And I'm going to put that out of the way for now too. Okay, what else do we need? Well, we need some layers. These are two layers that we're going to have on our card. The first layer is just a quarter of an inch smaller in both directions. So instead of four and a quarter by five and a half, it's four by five and a quarter. Okay, and see when I shift it, so there's the quarter inch you can see. When I shift it, it gives us an eighth of an inch border all the way around. Now this next one is about the same, but it's not. So if you look at this now, I'm gonna shove that into the corner. It's not exactly a quarter of an inch difference in this direction, but in this direction it is. So this is five inches tall now, but instead of being three and three quarter inches, it's just a little bit over that. So if we take and we look at 16 inches, three quarters is the same as, let me do this in my head here, is the same as, oh, come on, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I need my my cheat sheet. Um, we're looking at evening evergreen. It's um, 12 sixteenths. There we go. So three quarters is 12 sixteenths, and we want to make it 13 sixteenths. So if you know what the 16th inch mark is over, um, you know, beyond the, the, the three quarter inch mark, then you know where we're going to cut. I'm sorry. I'm just getting, I'm getting into the math too much, Rachel. Oh my gosh. Let's emboss now. Let's do some embossing. So we're going to dive right into this piece here because we want to prepare that first. So we're going to take our stamp and cut and emboss machine out. Oh guys, lots of prayers going out. Wow. This is great that you are all helping each other in this way. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to read through the comments afterwards. I promise. So now we're going to lay this inside here. This is our embossing folder and um, it has all this wonderful citrus on it. I'm going to go ahead and run that through. We need our platform. Let me grab that. I've rearranged my craft room. Did you guys notice? I, I'm going from a different angle now, kind of angled a different way into my craft area. So um, I have like lots more room on this side and nothing on this side. And I'm used to grabbing from both sides. Okay. This is a thick embossing folder. So the only thing we need, we don't need the die adapter number two. We, the only thing we need, and be, I don't want to drop this, hold on, is the gray plate. So we're just going to sandwich those together. We're leading with the fold of the embossing folder first, and we're going to crank it through. And what it's, it's going to do for those of you that are beginning crafters is it, it's going to give... Um, uh, creases and uh, embossing basically it's going to create that design and press it in to our cardstock so that's what we have now we have this beautiful citrusy um, look here going on um, I'm going to set this up for the dies because that's going to come actually we're going to do one more thing we're going to do one more thing with this we're going to take and do some playing around with our dies and our embossing folder and our stamps. So remind me to come back to this. <laughs> we're just gonna set that over there for now. But in the meantime, we're gonna grab this piece and our trimmer again, and we're gonna go through those cuts. I'm gonna zoom in just a tad so you can see a little bit closer here. And we're gonna go through the cuts for how to do this fun pattern, okay? All right, so you decide what's gonna be your top, what's gonna to be your bottom. It really doesn't matter too much um, on this. The reason why I wanted to do this background on the card is because I wanted just a subtle, fun little thing going on. I didn't wanna just have an embossed 
background. I wanted to just have some kind of, I don't know, something to look at besides that background. So we're going to now do some cutting and the key number is to, rem to remember is one and a quarter inches. So we're going to bring this edge, which I'm going to now call the bottom, to one and a quarter. And I'm going to use this side of my trimmer because it's, it's easier to line up. So we're going to go over to the one and a quarter. I got glue dot residue on there. Okay, so we're at the one and a quarter and we're going to cut. And now we're going to lift up. Oh, you know what? I have to tell you something, you guys. You need sharp blades. And I think my blade, I'm going to flip it the other way. So you can see what happened here. You need a sharp blade, you guys. You gals. You gals and guys. See what I did? So that is the issue with embossed cardstock is you can, if you don't have a sharp enough blade, you can accidentally do something like that. Okay, we're gonna keep going and we're gonna use the other one. Um, yeah, we're gonna use the other one. We're gonna try to use the other one to piece it together. Okay, so now in this direction, you're gonna go to the one and a quarter inches and we're gonna cut. Okay, so now we've got one and a quarter by one and a quarter and then we've got this piece here and we're gonna set those aside. It really doesn't matter what size that is, but <laughs> that's what you have. Um, I want to say it's a little over two. Yeah, it's a, about a, a sixteenth of an inch over two and a half inches. Okay, keep them together as you're setting them aside. Then check your puzzle. <laughs> and now we're going to cut on this side. And we can go ahead and use the measurement on that side of the trimmer. We're going to go ahead and cut there at one and a quarter inches. Okay, so we've got another one and a quarter inch strip and in this direction at the top we're going to cut at one and a quarter. So keeping them all in the same direction, I'm going to lay them over here. Yeah, you can kind of see what I've got going on, can't you? It's right above my head. Okay, next we're going to take this piece, we're going to turn it so that the bottom is cut off again at one and a quarter inches. And we're going to put everything back in place. And next, we're going to take this piece. Now this piece, you'd think is a perfect square, but it's not a perfect square. Okay? It's two and a half by a little over two and a half. So we're going to remove a sixteenth of an inch. And I'm hoping that this blade is sharp enough <laughs> where it's going to remove it. We're going to cut down in the middle first. I love this tip that I um, gained from from V when you're cutting a sixteenth of an inch strip off. You want to start kind of in there first. And then once you cut downward, you can come back and go the other direction. And I can tell my blade is not sharp, you guys. It is not sharp. I'm getting a new blade. We're going to change it out. I didn't even mark this one. I wonder why it's old. That's okay. We're going to grab a bunch of new ones here. All right, now we're ready, hopefully. I'm going to position it right here and cut down and then cut up. And I got it. I got it out of there, but it was, it was difficult because I did not start with a sharp blade, and I'm so sad about that. But now we have a nice clean cut on that side. So now it's exactly two and a half by two and a half. Why did we get rid of that um, 16th inch? Because when you're piecing this together, it's not going to... See how these two, now they're different, right? Okay, this one's a little further beyond. Ignore that corner. This one's a little further beyond. When we cut this in half, which we're going to do right now, at one and a quarter. See, it's one and a quarter on each side now. When we cut that in half, we want to lay it back into our card spaced apart a bit. And we need that little sixteenth of an inch. My goodness, my blades. i got to work on my blades. But you can now see how that sixteenth of an inch over here compensates for that section. Okay, let's leave that there for a second and let's come to this paper. This is what we're going to build it on top of. And if we bring this back in, can we do it? Can we do it, Rachel? I don't know. This one was a little sharper. I shouldn't have picked it up. <laughs> okay. So this one goes in the upper corner. I don't know if we can do it this way, you guys. I might just have to, I'll just have to assemble the card with the little niche on the side. 
That's okay. I need somebody here doing it with me. <laughs> they could put the puzzle for me, the puzzle together. I'm gonna to put seal adhesive on the back side just in case I have to kind of position it. But you can certainly use multi-purpose glue. Now we're gonna use a, leave a sixteenth of an inch all the way around on the sides. And I'm gonna build with the corners first. Just so I'm seeing if the spacing is working out. And it, so far it's looking like it's working out except for that little spot. <sighs> <sighs> There's always something that happens in a live. If this was pre-recorded, I could have I could have changed that. But then you wouldn't know that I made that mistake and you wouldn't know how to fix it yourself. So basically the way that you would fix that yourself, I've got a, I've got an idea here. Um, you just redo it. <laughs> you just redo it. But you know, we'll try something. Okay, we're keeping these all in the same order of how they were cut just so that in case somebody looks at the subtleness of this background, they can see that the design flows. So this one goes next. Smooth that out. My blades, I don't know. Yes, just get new blades, you guys. Don't worry about it. It happens. This is, this is not a rotary trimmer. Rotary trimmers press against cardstock in a totally different way, and it's the cutting mat that you have to replace on this. This kind of trimmer does not have a cutting mat. It's got a, a channel and the blades are what gets the tension or the resistance or whatever, uh, the friction. And so that's what gets worn out. You just have to replace your blades every once in a while. Okay, now we can put this piece back in or we can substitute it, which is what I'm gonna do on this card. So we're gonna bring our sentiment in and we're gonna stamp with the same ink color. I love how the evening evergreen, which is the dark green we're using, and the Parakeet Party vibrate against each other. They're just two different greens that look um, really amazing together. I'm stamping off to the side a bit, and I'm using my clear photopolymer stamp so I can see exactly where I'm going, which is great. And uh, I'm stamping off to the side because we want to make room for our decoration that we put on the card. So we will add this here. And this is the thought I had, which which I don't know if you guys like it or not, but let's just give it a try and see what happens. Okay, my little thought was, can we take this little guy and glue him back in? Probably not. <laughs> that was my thought, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah, it's too messy. It's too messy, we're gonna leave it alone. And I will just um, replace that layer later on, maybe. That's okay. We have to keep going. It's alive, Rachel. It's alive. All right, this is gonna get added to the front of the card and we can do that now too. Let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> what else is gonna go wrong today? <laughs> Sometimes I get to thinking that like, oh my gosh, this went wrong, now what else? Okay, now let's stop for just a second before we move on to the other portion of the card. Hopefully you liked that pattern and you can apply it to either multiple pattern designer papers or you can um, you know, do the scenery thing. Those are both great if you're gonna have that be the star of the show. I didn't want this to be the star of the show. I didn't want that background to be the star of the show. I just wanted it to have some fun little channels of green coming through and I thought that that would be a great way to do it. We're gonna take a look at these guys now along with the stamps. Um, I'm gonna stamp, um, I'm gonna grab some, some scrap white. I've moved my white. <laughs> I'm gonna grab some scrap white and we are going to do some stamping of this onto two different scraps. I've got a couple scraps here. We're gonna bring in our Daffodil Delight color. And I think I'm gonna put this underneath our grid paper. This is a stamp and pierce mat. Oh, you didn't even see it because my grid paper is too close. This is a stamp and pierce mat. It's a foam mat that helps when you're using photopolymer stamps. So I just stuck it underneath our grid paper so that there's a little more cushion. Uh, it's like a firm cushion. All right, let's ink up our stamp. And we're gonna do that with, let's do it with Daffodil Delight. 
full color and stamp that onto this scrap here. Okay, next. Oh yeah, that's lovely. Let's do that. Let's just do that again on this piece. Because we're gonna need some of these, we just don't want embossed ones. You could have embossed ones on your, um, and we're gonna go up a little higher here. You could have embossed ones on your, um, your card that I'm showing you today. I just chose not to because I wanted the embossing to be in the background. Um, let's move that off to the side and let's grab the other stamp. So this is the other stamp that fits in there and it goes in like this. So it's like a two-step stamp set. We're going to ink that up also with, oh, <laughs> and then I forgot the daubers. Okay, we're going to do it again. Good thing we can flip it over. Hang on. Let's bring that one out of the way. Let's get our let's get our pad and ink it up. When you have a large stamp like this, it's easier to ink it up with the pad upside down. Before we stamp this, we're going to grab our crushed curry and our crushed curry spot. Or I'm sorry, dauber. So that's my crushed curry one. And I'm going to ink up some of the edges of the the citrus. So I think I'm going to go, let's see, how do we do this? We're just going to go on the, see the little dots that are on here? Those little dots, those are supposed to be highlights. So that means the, the light is shining more on that side. So I want the darker color on the opposite side. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a slightly darker yellow called Crush Curry onto this side. And then I'm going to do the same thing along the edges here like that okay just to give those two citrus pieces a little bit more uh, depth okay now to give it even more depth I'm gonna put this ink away and we're gonna grab soft suede what I know so I'm gonna grab my soft suede dauber and it looks like it's lined up with this row gotta love it See, there's a little label sheet that you can print off when you buy it too. Okay, so here's my soft suede. And I'm going to ink up just a little bit. Just a tiny bit over here on this edge and over here. Just to give it a little bit more depth, okay? Hopefully that'll work. <laughs> Do you have a link to share the labels for the daubers? So I have a label maker that I promote in my favorite extras section of my website. So again, you go to my website at stampyourartout.com. <sighs> Click on shop. Sorry, I just wanted to breathe on this. Click on shop. And then um, in that, uh, that little drop down menu, there's a favorite extras section and you'll be able to find things that are not Stampin' Up! products. You'll be able to find those there. Okay, so there we got a little bit of shading going on on that piece. Okay, this one, bring that back in, and we'll use our, now where did I put it? Daffodil Delight color. It's probably, oh, it's right in front of my face. Yep, I knew that was gonna happen. So we're gonna ink that up again. And this time we're gonna stamp off onto our scrap paper, and then come back in and stamp here. And I'm not standing right over the top of it, so I hope it's gonna line up. When you're on the camera, it looks like it's lined up. At least in the camera it does. Oh, let me get that out of the way. Okay. So there. Oh my gosh, lovely citrus. Now you can do other color combinations. You can do greens and make limes. You can do yellows and pinks and do grapefruit. You can do oranges and do oranges, right? Okay, let's do this one. Because one of them we're going to do a little bit differently, just so you can see how the hybrid thing works. Stamp off onto your scrap paper and then line it up. And hey, we could pick the best one too, right? <laughs> if we're doing this twice. And then press down. And now we've got two sets of lemon of lemons. Okay. Um let us go to our what are we doing next? We're going to do the hybrid embossing folder. I'm going to pull this out of here. 
Got my Stampin' Pierce mat out of the way so that I can put this back onto my table. And let's set it up. So we need platform number one. We need the dies. We need the embossing folder. Here it is. And we're gonna lay this in here and it connects. See how it connects? So it either connects this way or this way. I'm too close, aren't I? Um, so you can see the connection area right there. Then this is the side that's going to cut. So you want your paper on the opposite side. This is so cool, you guys. OK, then you line it all up. So when you're laying this down, you're going to line this Im the images up. And I have to tilt it towards me. I'm sorry, you guys. Just give me a second to tilt it and line it up. You know what I can do? I can just use the, oh, oh, I got it. I think I got it. Yay. I'm going to take the dies out of there for just a second, so I'm just using the embossing folder to line it up. That's much easier. <laughs> now bring the die and embossing folder portion together. Make sure it's all connected. Shift if you need to, which we need to do, Rachel. Oh my gosh. You can tell I don't do these hybrid things that often, but they are so cool when they're done. So probably somebody else out there has a tip. That looks good. We're gonna do it. We're gonna roll it through. So it's gonna cut and it's gonna emboss at the same time. It's so funny. You know, the first time I saw these demonstrated was from Ashley Carlson in our group during one of our, um, we call them de demos galore. They were these wonderful um, events that we held and we each did a, a tutorial video and she used a hybrid um, embossing folder die set and die uh, and stamps at the time. And um, I was just like, wow, that's so cool. And she's the one who's the co-owner of the Country Hive. So now you can see what happened to those citrus fruit. I'm going to zoom in instead of holding them up higher so that you can catch the light better. So they are embossed pieces and they're stamped and they're cut. I mean, it's amazing. So you can get some really cool fruit. You can get, put glitter on them to make them look all sparkly and shiny and, and yummy. Okay, let's take now and let's just die cut. So for die cutting, this is great. This is like stamp and cut and emboss 101, right? For die cutting, we want this sheet. We need our die adapter number two. We need our scratchy mat number three. And we need another number three. And we're just going to lay this down, lay these on top. I'm going to grab my post-it tape and stick that on here. I used post-it tape the other day for masking a stamp when I was inking up a portion of it and I didn't want another portion to be inked up. And what was great about it is the ink didn't come off on my hands afterwards because post-it tape is like cardstock or paper. It absorbed the ink. It was much better than using regular, like, I don't know, washi or, um, you know, scotch tape or whatever. Cause it just, it was just better. It didn't get messy. It did not get messy. So now I've got my citrus fruit that's ready for my card. We're going to die cut some more, but this time I'll show you how to do the leaves. So let's just leave this set up and bring in our other scrap card stock. This time um, we do need, do we need some white still? Let me look at my finished card. We do not need any more white. We're good with white. Let's bring in these scraps. One of them I'm going to punch with one of my favorite punches. This is the bow punch. Um, I looked up what a bow was yesterday. I was like, what's a bow? And technically it is like a huge branch of a tree, like a main branch. This is not a branch of a tree, but I guess they had to come up with some name because they couldn't call it the leaf punch again since we already had a leaf punch. But we're gonna cut a punch out a couple of these. Okay, 
if you have a strip, it, it just punches out the ones you want. Um, for this one, I want both the little um, thing that looks more like a flower. So I wanted this design too. And I wanted the cluster of leaves. And I'm going to do a couple of those. This is vellum cardstock. It's nice and thick, but it's transparent. You can see through it. Not completely, it's kind of hazy. That's what vellum is. It's not like acetate or anything. But a fun addition, especially with these punches, when you want something real subtle, but still kind of there, um, those kind of punches are, uh, or that kind of cardstock is awesome for that, vellum cardstock. Okay, on these pieces, we're gonna do some stamping. We're gonna bring in the two greens. So we're gonna use Parakeet Party and Evening Evergreen. Parakeet Party, Evening Evergreen, two in colors. This one is staying and this one is supposed to be leaving. <laughs> we don't know, we don't know yet. We will find out later on today. Okay, so I'm gonna ink up this stamp in the Parakeet Party. I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna grab my Evening Evergreen, which I have right here. There's my fun label again. And I'm gonna pounce it up and down. And then I'm gonna start towards the part where they're pinched together, cause that's where they're gonna connect to um, a flower or the fruit or whatever. So typically the darkest color will be further in because of shadows, right? And so I'm just kind of inking it up like that. I'm gonna go a little bit further up. Now these are two really different greens. So it's gonna have a very distinct difference unless I do it nice and soft. So I'm trying to go nice and soft as I stamp. And now it looks like there's a little flow of the green. If you want to, you could do a third color in there. So let's just kind of clean that off, <laughs> ink it up again, come in with the dauber. Probably want to clean it off more than I did, but um, yeah, speed, Rachel. We're going for speed on the live. So yeah, I've daubed on some color and we're going to stamp that down. And we need another. <laughs> How many do we need? Should have done a few of these ahead of time. Okay, so we're going to ink up another one and dab on the color. You got the hang of this, right? Okay, my assistant in my room, who is non-existent, will you please do one more for us off camera? <laughs> Stamp another one. One more, one more. Okay, I look at it, I'm getting my pad all dirty. Well, now I can show you a fix, you guys. I'm gonna show, oh, and I got some kind of hair on there. I can show you a fix for how you can take care of that if you happen to do a boo-boo like that. Okay, let's stamp that one down. And I've got them spaced far apart enough where they're um, hopefully not going to interfere when I'm cutting them out. Let's close up our dauber container and grab a tissue. Here it is. Wipe off Rachel's hands. Okay, so this is what you do. Basically, before it starts soaking in, do you see that ink there? It's just a tiny bit of dark ink. Before it starts soaking in, you dab at it. And it may lighten the area from, you know, using the other ink, but it gets rid of it so that you don't have that issue anymore. It's gone. And now I can take like a, a spoon or a um, credit card or something that's got a nice, you know, plasticky um, firmness to it. And I can kind of roll across the top to spread the ink out again, make it even. All right, let's close that up. Now let's bring in um, our die cutting machine again. And we're gonna cut these. All right, so let's take our dies. Which ones are they? We have two. <gasps> Look how awesome that is. We have two of the same. So in this stamp set, we have two of the same flowers, two of the same um, smaller flowers. I'm sorry, in the, in the collection of dies. And in the stamp set, here's that flower cluster and the one single one and then the leaf. So you can actually crank out some die cut, you know, stamping and die cutting pretty fast with the um, double dies. Double dies. All right, so let's lay those down and grab our, here it is, our 3M. Our 3M post-it tape. And we're just gonna stick that and hold it. And we'll do this, we'll do this one here. I think we can get, no, we should probably go this one. 
I don't want them to be touching as they're getting die cut. Okay, so hopefully that'll work. We need our cutting mat. Don't overlap your dies when you're die cutting. We probably could have done like this middle one and this further one, but I think this should work. Back up, straighten out. <laughs> Did we do it? Peel it off slowly. If you peel it off too fast, you can tear, accidentally tear your die cut images. Okay, and let's move it to the new spot and do that one more time. What is new in our world? I'm trying to think. I'm just so excited for the new color announcements, you guys, um, and to see the new catalog. If you uh, want to see all that stuff, you can be a demonstrator. You can sign up to join us in our fun community of demonstrators. Get the starter kit and be in on all the fun. Otherwise, now you got to wait. It's okay. We'll all be excited on our side. And then you just guys just hang in there. And on April, no, not April, May 2nd, you'll be able to see the new catalog. If you do not have um, a demonstrator, by the way, let me know. See, you can accidentally tear it off. Let me know. Um, I can put you on my mailing list. If you go to my blog at stampyardout.com, you can click um, subscribe and subscribe to my blog posts. Okay, we're moving this all off to the side. We've got everything ready to assemble now. Let's bring those in. I do have some accenting to do with um, Wink of Stella. That's a fun, fun thing to accent with. I've also got some accenting to do um, with some embellishments. Let's do the inside of the card. The inside is going to get stamped with a stamp that I haven't mounted yet. You have some choices on here, as you can see. I'm going to use the one that says, have a zesty birthday. I'll just peel that up in a way, let it relax. When you let it relax on the table, it forms to the shape it needs to be. Instead of sticking it onto the block yourself, just let it relax and then pick it up. We'll grab our dark ink, our evening evergreen ink. Again, this is a color that may be leaving because it's been around for two years and it's in a non-permanent collection right now. So if it goes, it goes, but that will be announced later on today. We'll know of retiring colors, we'll know of retiring products. Um, tune in to my Facebook page so that you can get information on the retiring products right away because I'll probably post that there first before anything else. All right, let's grab our finished card and take a peek at it as we assemble. So the inside has this cute little half lemon and the leaves are coming out from the sides. So this is what I did for it. I took and I put seal adhesive along the back side of the whole entire slice of lemon and then I grabbed my uh, branches and positioned them so that one was coming out like this and the other one was coming out the opposite way. So it would be, normally it would be like this and flipped over, but I didn't want that. I wanted the mirror effect of it. So I flipped it. And that's the great thing about punches is you can flip them. Now what happens now is I've got less adhesive on the back here because this lift here is causing these areas to not be as strong. So you could then take and add more seal or my recommendation is to then come in with your um, multi-purpose liquid glue and to also add a little bit of adhesive on the leaves because then they'll be guaranteed to kind of stay and stay held in place too. And you just need a tad, just a tiny bit. So we're going to grab all that <laughs> and lay that underneath like that. Is it straight? It's straight enough, isn't it? Oh, it's tilted. That's okay. The, the leaves are straight. That's what matters. If the fruit is tilted, it's okay. Okay, now let's build this up on the front. And to do that, I did the same sort of thing. So instead of laying the leaves down onto the, the base, I took each piece and I said to myself, okay, where do I want this? I want this one to be sitting here. So I'm going to add that leaf there which means I need a little bit of 
seal here. Or again, you can use the multi-purpose liquid glue, which would be a little bit more precise. In fact, I will show you that next. So I want this one here, which means I need those leaves about there so that they're not going to be over the edge of the card. If you go outside the edge of the card, what happens is you can't get it into your um, envelope when it's time to mail it, okay? So we want it there. That looks like it works. We also need um, some vellum leaves back there too. So I'm going to have this one peeking out, I think like that. So this is where you can use the precision tip bottle. Um, you can come in like this and then you're just gluing exactly where you need it. You can lay this over the top, lay it down, and pick it up. Okay, I just pushed down and it clung to where it needed to be. So that's for that piece. This little guy is going to go up a little higher. So I could leave this laying in place here where I want it to sit. And this one's going to go up a little bit higher. And I want, want it kind of tilted like that. So let's put some glue on the back side, right in, or I'm sorry, the front side of that leaf. And we're going to take and shove it underneath, make sure the leaves are within the card, and stick it down. All right, next, we're going to do the same thing with this um, sec. Actually, you know what? I think this section of leaves had a little bit of vellum on top. So we'll do that right now. We'll add, we'll add our glue, and then we'll add our little section of vellum, like so. Okay, it's not exactly the same, but I put the vellum on top, and then I added a little bit more adhesive back there, stuck it underneath, and squished it down. So nothing's getting stuck to the card yet. We're using the card kind of as a guide. This vellum leaf, I wanted to have kind of up and out a little higher here, so we're going to put some glue on the top side of it, just towards the base lift this up and stick it down okay and then we've got another lemon that's going to be sitting this way and remember this is the shine of the lemon this is the shadow so we want the shadow going down and we want to be able to still see our sentiment so we want to put that like right about there and on that one we will add our vellum cluster of flowers this little guy and we'll put that one kind of right there. And then we have one more leaf section. And as long as you put it right at the base, you don't have to worry about exactness. We'll stick that one right there. And everything's going to fit on here. So now the next step is to take these pieces one at a time. So here's one cluster. Flip it over and to use dimensionals to hold everything in place even more. So you see how I've got these going on the top of my sections that I've added. So that'll help support it. Take the backings off, slip those down underneath. And again, as I'm sticking this down, everything else is still staying in place because I need those to guide me in making sure my card is put together right. And I have to go from the furthest one underneath to the one that's sitting on top. So the next one that has to be done is this one. So we'll slide that out, and again, dimensionals on top of the areas where we have the loose pieces. We can even put, and we got to make sure here, because you can't put them necessarily here unless you want them to really be lifted up higher than the other one, but um, I think that's good. I think I have enough. They're just along the bottom. That way it's going to be kind of right next to the other slice. If, you, if I did put another dimensional up here, it would push away from this one and look as if it's even further out, which is fine. I just um, didn't do that on my original card. Okay, hang on. Turn this the right way so that our branches are in. Okay, it fits. Now let's take this one and do the same thing. This time, I do want my lemon to be pushed away from that main slice. So when I put my dimensionals on, I'm going to put one at each end. And when I place these down on top of the card, you're going to see a lot more depth between those pieces. So there you can see there's a shadow, a real big shadow under that one versus this one. 
So it's, it's up to you how you want to add those layers, if you want more depth or if you don't. The next step is to do the Wink of Stella. So I'm going to shake my little brush and pull off the cap. And my little tip to you guys is don't just smear it all over. Be really careful how you paint it on. Because when you turn it to the side, you want that sparkle to be in the exact spot that you want it. Right? So I would go around and I do this to all my little wedges as if it's sugary sweetness. And um, on this one you can see, oops, I'm coming too close. Can you see the sugary sweetness on them? <laughs> Hopefully. There we go. There's a little bit of an angle that shows it off. Okay, on this one, I added these awesome rhinestones that I think are amazing, and I hope they don't retire. They are the iridescent um, rhinestone basic jewels. I have a couple packets together just because um, when I start running out of one, I combine them. And then, um, but on this one, I thought it'd be fun to show. Oh, and you know what? I didn't use my tray. <laughs> There was too much on my desk, Ashley and James. I'm sorry. I didn't use my tray during the demonstration, but yes, my little tiny dies for my leaves and stuff, which are over here. <laughs> I'm going to have to have my trays behind me now. Um, those would be good inside my little tray, right? See, they're not moving. Okay. So this, uh, my second tray, let's just grab another one. Okay. We need just a few because we want to be able to spread them out. And we're going to use our take your pick tool because that has a little gummy end to it. Okay, right there. And um, 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 oh, yes. So we're going to add some glue where we want our little pretties to go. And I'm choosing to add these because they will just give it more of a lemony look. I already know where I'm adding them, so I can just add my adhesive right now, my little glue dot bubbles. It's, it's, it's got to get cleaned off. My, the end of my glue is a little bit gummed up. Okay, so we're picking this up, laying it down on top. And now we can grab another one. Let's grab, let's grab this size and add that one right there. And I love how they're just intensely yellow. Like, look at how gorgeous that is. You can see it. You can see it. Okay. Um, let's grab another kind of smaller one. They're easier to grab when they're spread out. I love these little trays. Okay, and then I would add a couple more down here in these little corners. And I'm going to fix that, I promise. Because <laughs> I like to use the cards I make. So, but we'll just share that one at the end here with this one open because this one is finished on the inside and you can see that there is the end result. We have prizes to do. Um, last week we had, um, what did we have last week? We had, here they are. We had some kit stamp sets because I was showing paper pumpkin stuff. So I have some kit stamp sets that are still left. We have a couple thanks kits. We have a couple chameleon ones. Um, along with that, you get some really fun kit adhesive leftovers. I've got full sheets of so many things just because I get a lot of kits. Um, so there we have like sheets of adhesive. You also get a clear block. So if your name is drawn right now, you get to choose from the thanks or the chameleon set. And let me pull that up on my computer because we want you guys to see who the winners are. So let's go over there right now. The winner from the was this youtube this was youtube the youtube after live commenters and i'm going to put my email address up there so you can see it um roxanne ingrafia 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 i think i said it right ingrafia roxanne ingrafia you are the winner and thank you for your sweet comment um you are one of the after live winners from youtube and then on facebook our winner was holly paplau so congratulations to Holly Paplow. Yay! I drew your names this morning right before our live went on. Now for prizes, um, the prizes that we're going to do today. Hang on a minute. Let me grab them. 
Okay, a lot of you like this prize. I've done it in the past and it's fun, you know, it's just fun when there's choices, right? So this one has some fun color choices. I collect because I collect a lot of um, kits. I make a lot of things with kits, you guys. It's just crazy. I have a lot, a lot, a lot of spots. Okay, these are Stampin' Spots. They are little miniature ink pads. And you'll get to choose three of these. So you can see the colors here if you take a look closely. Um, we've got Summer Star, so some of these are like um, old colors. Summer Starfruit, Misty Moonlight, Evening Evergreen, Crushed Curry, Poppy Parade, Rich Razzleberry, Cajun Craze, Shaded Spruce, Garden Green, Gray Granite, Coastal Cabana, Soft Suede, Blackberry Bliss, um, Night of Navy, Basic Gray Archival, Basic Gray Regular, Pool Party, Early Espresso, Mossy Meadow, Cherry Cobbler, and Mango Melody, plus you get a set of daubers. So you get to pick out three colors and you get a set of five daubers if your name is drawn from Miss, uh, Miss Trisha. And let me go to my computer now so I can see if she has called out the winner's names. There they are. So I'm gonna see if I can scroll up and tag her comment. That's always the truth. There it is, I see it, I see it. There we go, I think I tagged it. So now I'm going to take my little thing away. Ta-da, my face is hidden, but you can see that uh, Jeanette Atkins, Atkinson and Cheryl Kincaid, you are today's winners. Congratulations to both of you. Make sure that you see those colors quickly. Um, take those away and reach out to me at my email address. You can see my email address at, again, stampyourartout.com. Um, what else do I want to share? I think I shared it all. So I'm going to let you guys all go, I think. I think I covered it all. I'm looking at my list. Oh, next week. Next week. Um, I'm contemplating because we can order new products, um, select new products, not everything, but new products and probably all the new colors. I'm hoping, I'm crossing my fingers, um, on April 4th, which is a Tuesday, and I can expedite. But that doesn't guarantee that I will get it by Wednesday when it's time to do my live because some things have come during my live. So I'm considering moving my live to Thursday. Are you guys okay with that? Because <laughs> I want to do the co color comparison for you and I don't want to like, like disappoint you and say that I'm going to do the color comparison and then not have anything ready. So I am contemplating moving it to Thursday. I just have to check with Trisha and Lisa who I messaged right before this live so they have no clue unless they saw their messages. But I will check with them first and then you will go to my Facebook page. Um, just go to my Facebook page, Stamp Your Art Out with Rachel, and click on events, and you'll be able to see if that event has gotten changed to Thursday. Don't check it yet. I have to, you know, give me, like, check a couple days before, like maybe early next week, Sunday or Monday, and, and check to see if that event got moved. Normally my lives are Wednesday at 11, but I want to have this new product to share with you. So, um... So what else do I want to say? Oh, you can also, once the live gets announced on my YouTube channel, if you're a YouTube subscriber, you can see on my YouTube channel what it's scheduled for. So there we go. That was my big announcement as I, I can't wait to share this new stuff with you. Um, check out V's cards. Again, there's a link in the description of the video. Um, check out the Country Hives products, new trays, hex trays, yay. I'm gonna let you all go. So I'm, uh, um, take care everyone. Winners, reach out to me. And now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye <laughs> everyone.